Hello River Terrace parents, this is Pastor Ken Bieber and welcome to the second installment of RTC Supporting Parents, an online class, resource, uh, video to watch or MP3 to listen to, uh, where we are uh, offering biblical and practical resources uh, during this time of COVID-19. And I'm excited today because uh, not only will we hear from Shalom as she highlights an area of children's ministry, but I interview one of our elders, Lynette Pemble, who not too long ago retired from her time as a, a teacher, a phys ed teacher. And she has uh, many examples of uh, and, and explanations for um, keeping your kids active. Uh, because on the one hand, if your kids are going to school in person, I know from my kids who are doing that, uh, they have less movement than than they're they used to in school and those at home uh, are you know they don't have you don't have a, a bell ring and they go to gym class or go outside to for recess and so Lynette offers some uh, practical things uh, re regarding getting your kids moving and and please remember this is a um, this is for parents of of uh, all ages from you know earliest up through high school I want to take a couple of moments to, to focus a bit on why physical activity is important, not just to, you know, get uh, rid of some energy and, and make things more peaceful in the house or to improve our mood, uh, but because it, even it shows in uh, my conversation with Lynette a bit, it goes to the very nature of who we are. You know, when we think back to Genesis and the creation of humanity, uh, Genesis 2 verse 7 tells us, Then the Lord formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And in the chapter before, you know, we have two accounts of creation, Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. In Genesis 1, toward the end of the chapter, after the Lord has uh, arranged everything on the earth and, and then he's filled it with vegetation and, and then plant uh, animal life, uh, then he makes humanity, people, in his image. And uh, he makes them in his image, male and female, he creates them. And then in chapter 2, it, it focuses more on that first relationship of, of uh, man as male and female, Adam and then Eve. And so when he makes Adam in this story, uh, he, he makes him from the material of the ground and then breathes his life into him, the breath of life. And, uh, and, and this is where we see this image of God, that, that we are privileged in a sense, we're set apart from other mammals or the rest of the animal world. Um, we have the image of God in us. But notice that, that we are not just souls, souls floating around. We are body and soul, body and soul together. And uh, it, our church is part of the Christian Reformed denomination, part of the Reformed tradition. And so from the, the um, 16th century, we have our faith statement, uh, the Heidelberg Catechism. And it begins with, with the, the question, and often with um, funerals, this will be on the, the bulletin. Sometimes we'll read and answer this question in funeral services because it, it gets to that gospel truth of who we are, that question what is your only comfort in life and in death? And the answer starts by saying that I am not my own, but belong body and soul in life and in death to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. And body and soul, and that's what we see in Genesis 2. Adam is made from the ground. Adam is given the breath of life from God, so it's body and soul together. And think about it, you know, when Jesus... Jesus defeats death, he dies a physical death, and then he's resurrected. He comes back in physical form and he even challenges his disciples to, you know, look, this is my flesh. And it's the same for us is that we believe in the resurrection. We don't just believe in our souls continuing into eternity, but that one day our body and soul, so our life and in death, we trust Christ. Our body and soul come back together. And so, um, how does that all work? Uh, you know, um, practical experience and and uh, the, the work of scientists and doctors, researchers help us to understand it a little better. 
um, yet we don't know how it totally works. And yet when Lynette talks about um, having, you know, uh, having uh, the, the different part, parts of the brain work together and coordinating the body and then getting oxygen to the brain through drinking water and things like that, it, it just gives us more evidence of, of how we are body and soul together. And also, I have um, I, a, a link in the email to, um, to an article that uh, Shalom pointed out about making sure that our kids enjoy Sabbath rest, Sabbath rest, so that, um, so that our bodies are getting the rest that we need so that when we're awake, we can uh, have the physical activity, have our learning, and um, be functioning as best we can. And so when we talk about having our, our kids engage in physical activity. Uh, it's not just with the goal that maybe they'll be in sports and compete and maybe even get a scholarship to college. And it's also uh, not, again, like I mentioned before, not just to work off some energy so they're not bouncing off the walls in the house, but rather it's because we are, as we're made in the image of God, we're made body and soul together. And, uh, and that's, that's a good thing in, in how God has made us. And so I really appreciate uh, that this conversation might help you with, uh, with your, uh, your, your uh, children at home or when they get home from school. So please, please uh, enjoy and, and take some uh, uh, good pointers and uh, pieces of advice from Lynette. Okay. All right. Well, hello, Lynette. Good so, afternoon. Yeah, well, thanks for uh, sharing with us for RTC Supporting Parents. And um, I asked you to uh, talk with the parents um, because, you know, we're in this time of uh, people being, most people having to homeschool online, including those that never plan to homeschool their kids, uh, you know, um, but others are, our, our family is, is a, a hybrid because some of our kids are going to school in person and others are at home. But um, before we get into some specific suggestions on how to you know, keep your kids active and, and how to kind of break up the monotony or release stress, um, could you please just give a quick, uh, some of your background uh, in education and, and physical education? Well, um, I recently retired uh, June of 2019 after teaching elementary physical education um, for 25 years in the Williamston Community Schools. I also did um, middle school, sixth grade phys ed as well. And um, physical education and movement have been a part of my entire life. I was very fortunate to have family that uh, was very active. So it's nothing new to me. <laughs> yeah, well, and, oh, here, just one second. I'm gonna, oops, I'm trying to switch the view here. Okay, then, um, okay, so, you know, this is for parents of, of all ages, you know, youngest kids up through uh, senior high. But, um, oh, let's just say you have, like I listened to this story on the radio today about a family that actually has, um, you know, both parents are working, working from home. They have uh, help from outside even with their kids and yet they feel like they're scrambling. And, and so I think that stress is just ratcheted up. So, so, so could you, what would you suggest to a family like, hey, we want to, uh, how do we keep our kids active at home? What, what would you suggest? Like, uh, what well, advice do you give? Well, there, there's no doubt that this is a challenging time. Um, I, I'm grateful that, you know, uh, our kids are raised, but our daughter is a first grade teacher and most of my friends are teachers. So I um, can understand uh, to some degree what parents are going through. And um, the, every age is different. The brain is developing. One of the things that I was able to learn um, and spend a lot of time with, with professional development and going to conferences is about how the brain learns and how it functions. And um, the first thing is that um, our, the main job of our brain is to help us survive. And you've probably heard teachers say, find a space in your home where your child is, you know, is comfortable, it's quiet, and they can focus. Because um, when our brain is processing uh, new information, new da data, okay, if we are having to worry about our survival, if we're hungry, if we're, we're concerned about what's going on around us, then we're not going to be able to take in that new information. 
So um, that's, that's one of the things we have to make sure is that your kids are in a, a good spot, a quiet spot where they can focus on, on taking in new information. The next thing I would say is, number one, water. And I had a water bottle, but I didn't bring it out here. Water is, has oxygen. And when you drink water within two to three minutes, that oxygen goes into your brain. Your body processes water different than tea or coffee or Gatorade. That's digested as food. But when you drink water, the oxygen that your body needs gets to your brain within two to three minutes. And that's gonna help your child to function. We want our children to move because they are growing and that keeps their muscles strong, but it does, it gets oxygen to all their organs, including their brain. So finding ways for your child to move throughout the day um, in between their learning is important. Um, definitely um, to start off, there's a, something called brain gym that you can do in the home, if it's raining out or just before your child starts. Now try to make sure that they have time um, so that they eat their breakfast because um, glucose and water, glucose and oxygen are the two things that your child's brain needs to learn. So after they've had their breakfast, do some movement. I want you to think about your, um, your brain as in two halves like this. You have a midline that goes down the center of your body. We have a right arm, a left arm, a right leg, a left leg. And those, when we can move those body parts and cross the midline, that helps to build bridges between our right and left side of the brain. And the more bridges you can build, the more new information your child can process and the better they can use background information they've already learned to help with the new learning. So a simple um, movement we can do to start with, and I will um, have these uh, uh, resources up for Ken. Um, it's called pacing yourself. And this is a way for kids to ground themselves, to move their bodies um, for two to three minutes to get their heart rate up so that that oxygen does go to their brain. So with the pacing, okay, what we start off with is we find our center and um, our center right here, our belly button. When your child does this, it's grounding them. It's bringing the attention to their body. Okay, then the second thing you do, I, we call it, turning on the headlights. I pretend this is like driving a car. We're gonna start our engine, there's the push button, and then we're going to get that motor going. Okay, we're just gonna rev it. And what this does, again, there's, there's senses here that helps the child to focus and stimulate areas in the brain for learning. And it brings their consciousness back to themselves, not to what's going on with their friends or the cartoons or the Legos or whatever else they're doing. After that, you're gonna do cross crawls. And this is where we cross that midline. The more you can have your child do to cross that midline, the better. So you're gonna have your child simply do some of these. You could do this, count them, time your child. And they don't wanna go fast. You wanna bring your opposite knee and elbow together. And do this for about two or three minutes. And you can count, you can sing a song. There's lots of things you can do, but this is going to help your child to focus and it's gonna get their heart rate up. If they wanna go a little faster, that's fine. They can run it, but you don't wanna go crazy. After about two to three minutes of that, you're gonna put your hands out, back to back. And again, kids love this kind of thing to be able to do. And you'd be surprised how challenging it is for them. You might think this is so easy, but to them, this is a challenge. Even trying to get across that midline can be challenging for kids in kindergarten, first, second, third grade. Back to back, fingers interlocked. That's another tricky one for kids. Pull this in and then you can't see my feet, but you're gonna cross one leg over the other and take a deep breath and let it out. This is the basic move in Brain Gym. We've crossed the midline. We've gotten our heart rate up so that oxygen is flowing to their brain. If you can drink water prior to that or right after, that helps even more. And then the child can sit down and start. And there are many brain gym moves that trigger different areas in the brain. For example, if you do this, and this is something we naturally do. Ken, have you ever said, can I remember 
<laughs> what, oh. what was that? And you touch your head. Oh, sure. That's a natural movement. And that really does stimulate the recall in your brain and helps kid to kids to focus. And I have more of these um, movements um, with Brain Gym that I will, will put online for, uh, I'll give to Ken to put online. So having them do some basic um, movement prior to sitting down is good. If your child is having trouble sitting, good old exercise ball. Take them off the chair and have them sit. And if they want to bounce a little bit while they're reading, that's okay. That's okay. They're staying focused and this is grounding them. Of course, if they're kicking it for a soccer goal, then you got to rethink that and, you know, set the guidelines. Yeah, but this I actually, I use those, but just so I don't get a bad back, you know. That's right. And it's good for your core. Um, we've done this in uh, school. We have several students that um, like to use these. Um, so there's two little things. Um, getting outside for recess. You're at home and your kids will have a recess. Let Make them go outside. It's not too cold for them. It's not too rainy for them. It's not too hot for them. Kids love to go outside. And sometimes it takes a little encouragement if you're at home because they want to go back to what they've been doing, you know, either video game or whatever. But um, can you and I, we're, we're probably, well, I'm a little older than you, but raised in a time when we played outside. Um, what are, can you remember anything that you liked to do when you were outside? Yeah, well, ride my bike, um, you know, play catch. Uh, I remember we had a, a crab apple fight in the neighborhood, but that's probably not advisable. <laughs> Okay, those sorts of things. And you may have forgotten these things, but um, simple things like um, over here, I'm gonna walk over here and see if you remember doing this activity. Okay. There are so many simple things that you can send your child out to do and have, you know, time them. Say, okay, you've got five minutes. I want to see how many catches you can do off the roof. Okay. If they want to run, if you want, you want to get your kids running, they're, they're probably not doing things at home that they would be doing in phys ed class at school. If you have a backyard like mine where our trees are gone, okay, what I have out there, I put an egg carton here. We have one little tree we planted and there's an egg carton way out there. Have your child count how many times they can run back and forth in a certain amount of time. There are so many little things that we can do to um, help, our, help our children move that we've kind of forgotten about. We don't have to have a lot of money or uh, equipment. Um, one good piece of equipment you should have is a jump rope. Have you ever helped your kids jump? Try teaching that. Um, one other activity that um, is important for crossing the midline is skipping and galloping. Mm -hmm. Do you know how to skip or gallop? Show your kids how to do that. They have to cross the midline. They have to concentrate. They have to focus. When they're trying to build that skill, they're crossing that midline. These things are going to give them exercise and they're going to help them focus in school. That's been my job for a long time with the elementary kids especially. Um, for the older kids, when they run into something, or, or any kid, um, that's difficult. Again, the main function of the brain is to help your body survive and function. And if you're stressed or upset, you can do the brain gym, you can do the exercise. Another thing is humor. I have about five kids joke books that students gave me over the years because I started my class my, mostly my middle school classes, with a joke. When a child is frustrated, they're not going to be able to learn. To relieve that, use humor. It's the fastest and best way to get kids uh, to be able to focus. So along with exercise, there, there's a few other things. Water, humor. Um, there are great online resources. Go Noodle is a website that has movements, they, they use characters, they use real people, and they have fun music, and all their activities are anywhere from two to four minutes. So it's a quick break for your child. 
Um, anytime they get that time to take a break from their online learning, have them do some kind of movement to go to, um, there's other websites beside uh, Go Noodle, uh, Cosmic Kids, they're free. And again, I'll give those to Ken. I could go on and on and on, but we, this is not an endless program. <laughs> so uh, just a couple of, those are just a couple of oh. things that, uh, that are simple. Um, dancing to music inside. I used to tell my students to do that all the time. Um, yeah, well, no, that's, this is really helpful. And um, yeah, I'm sure that these will be useful. And, and um, I'm, so I'm grateful for your, all the work you've put into this and the, the fun ideas and, and um, yeah, and I, I thought, oh yeah, the, the uh, catching the ball off the roof is a great, just a, something great and easy to do. So um, yeah, well, thanks so much, Lynette. And, um, and maybe we'll uh, check in with you later if people have questions. And Yeah, and uh, as winter comes, if, if we need to, if you're still doing this and we need some ideas, uh, I'll, I'll drum up some good indoor stuff for kids to do and keep active. But the more you can cross that midline, mom and dad, even with your older kids, you know, hitting a tennis racket with a ball, mm. anytime you can cross that midline and move that body, get that heart rate up and feed it water, mm. you're going to help your child with learning and being more settled. Oh, okay. Well, great. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Welcome. Have a great week. Hello, I'm Shalom Jackanet. I'm the Children's Ministry Director here at River Terrace Church. And as part of Ken's River Terrace Church Supporting Parents, I'm going to be coming each week with just a little bit of information about something that I do here at church. In case you're wondering about it, want to know details, or want to share it with someone else. This week I'm talking about story time. This is something kind of new. I started it in the spring. It's a way of connecting with kids uh, during the week. Um, it's not a regularly scheduled thing that we do here at church, but I felt it was a way for me to get in front of the kids and share something fun with them. Some of the stories are religious in nature, some are not. Um, I have fun selecting them each week and reading the story to the kids. It's available on our website. I also post them on Facebook on our River Terrace Church Facebook page. And there's often a link in the Friday email that everyone gets. Um, so there's lots of places you can find that. It's also on our YouTube page. So I select a book and I vary the location where I read it. Uh, sometimes it's at home, sometimes I'm outside. I have been in the sanctuary, in the gathering hall, in the nursery, in the library here at church, all over the place. One thing that stays the same, and if your kids have watched one, they know about this. This is my childhood uh, teddy bear. His name's Graham Cracker, and he always joins us for story time. So that's something consistent they can look for each week. So some of the books that I've read are, just to give you an idea, Stella Luna. Streganona, Stone Soup, classics like The Giving Tree, Too Many Toys, The Littlest Matryoshka, new books in our library like Lotus and Feather, one of my favorite stories the Selfish Giant. Um, I read The Tale of the Three Trees, which is religious. Um, a book called I Wanted to Know All About God. Uh, a couple weeks ago, one of my favorite authors and illustrators, Jan Brett, I read Mossy. And then, for example, some books like... <clears throat> The Stars Above Us. This is another new book in our library. Um, at the end, I offered to mail Glow in the Dark Stars to any child that wanted some. This talked about how this little girl made Glow in the Dark Stars to help her deal with her daddy being gone. He happened to be gone to be deployed in the military. But for whatever reason, kids are missing somebody 
the glow in the dark stars are a nice way to remember that we're all looking at the same stars even if we're not together. And so I had glow in the dark stars that I uh, mailed to several, several families. And those kids just spoke up at the end of the story time and the parents reached out to me and I mailed those. Another book I read right at the beginning was called The Marvelous Mustard Seed. And it talked about faith, as small as a mustard seed. And so I got some mustard seeds, put the tiny seed in a baggie. You probably can't see this tiny seed and delivered mustard seed planting kits to several families. So sometimes at the end of the stories, I'll have a little activity or an opportunity or an, or an idea for the kids um, about how to relate that story into their week or what they can do with it. So um, there's about 25, 30 stories now. Um, there is a story time uh, collection on the website under Connect and under Children. So if you want to look up any of those, you can. And I'm planning on continuing to do these stories. Um, right now, uh, with meeting in person again, that's wonderful. And I do see uh, kids outside and inside, um, but I'm not able to really spend a lot of time with them yet. So this is just one way that I can spend 10 or 15 minutes with them reading a story, showing the pictures. And it's something that I personally love um, children's books and um, find a lot of meaning and enjoyment when I read them and I hope that parents are sitting down maybe occasionally and watching the stories with their kids too because it's just um, a lot of these stories are just so wonderful and the illustrations are often another reason why I select a book because they're just so great so that's story time and um, I hope you look it up and like I said I'm gonna continue it so I hope you're able to enjoy either some stories from the past or some stories in the future. So thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye-bye. Well, I'm glad to be able to share these different resources with you. I want to encourage you just as, uh, I started out by talking about God breathing into Adam the breath of life. Uh, I, I encourage each of us to take a few minutes throughout the day and then at night to, you know, set down the phone, turn off the computer or the TV, and just, just sit and breathe and be still and know that God is God, that He holds us body and soul in His hands, and that all the uh, frustrations, all the concerns, all the, the busyness, all the difficulties that we can entrust everything we are and everything we have to him. And that's my prayer for you today.